Hello and welcome to chapter 10. Chapter 10 in my Photoshop demos is all about the pen tool. And learning about the pen tool is going to allow you to kind of transition over to Adobe Illustrator pretty seamlessly. So we're going to be talking about the pen tool and how it works in conjunction with the paths panel. So in order to learn how to use the pen tool, we're going to start with some basics here. I'm going to go to open and find my chapter 10 folder. And what I have in this first one, 10.1, three different path files, and we're going to work on all three. I'm going to start with file number one, and it's just simple, straight paths. Okay, so keep in mind, I'm going to be working with my layers panel, but what I'm really doing actually is working in conjunction with the paths panel. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this first line. Okay, and then I'm going to hit D for default colors for default black and white. Now, right next to your type tool are your arrow tools. You're going to see the same black and white arrows when we get into Adobe Illustrator. But the black arrow selects the entire line. If I drew a line here, the white arrow is used to correct mistakes. And I guarantee if you are new to the pen tool, you're going to be making a few mistakes. So I'm going to start by activating my white arrow. Then I come up right above that, and if I press and hold, I have a bunch of different pen tools. But the one we want is the one at the top, your standard pen tool. Okay, here's how it works. With the tip of the pen, and let me preface that with the fact that you should be able to see the pen tool. If you don't, you're going to see a crosshair. And if you click on the pen tool, and you come out and you see that crosshair, that means your caps lock key is turned on on your keyboard. So you wanna make sure that caps lock key is turned off so you can actually see the pen tool. Okay, and as soon as I click, I've established an anchor point. From the moment you click, your paths panel is gonna be recording what you are working on. You're working on a work path. You're not done yet. Okay, so the way the pen tool works is kind of like playing connect the dots. If I move down here and click, now those two connect. And then I click up here and they connect, and here, and here, and here. And this line will go on forever if you don't stop. Okay, so one of the tricks is, let's say I clicked here, but I actually wanted to click down there. So on a Mac, I can hold my command key and there's that white arrow. The white arrow that's right underneath the pen tool. On a PC, I would hold my control key and that would activate that white arrow. So you can bend these lines. You can reposition these anchor points. Then when I let go of my command key or my control key on a PC, my pen tool pops right back up. And if I've ever kind of paused for a second, I just go right back to the end of the line, click to connect, and then click to continue. And again, this line will go on and on and on. So the way you turn off the line to tell Photoshop you're done is you hold Command key on a Mac or Control key on a PC. There's that arrow and you click anywhere on a blank part of the page. Now all the points are turned off. If I hold command on my Mac and click, I can hit delete, delete, or on a PC that would be backspace, backspace, and I would erase that path. Okay, so what I wanna do is just zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole page right here for the most part. And I'm going to go back to my pen tool. All I want to do for a vertical line is click once at the top and let go. Reposition my cursor down at the bottom and I hold my shift key. 
and I click again. Your shift key makes a perfect vertical line. Now this dark or solid anchor point is telling me that's the current anchor point that I just clicked, which is true. And that is the active anchor point. So if I'm done with a line, I have to turn that line off. Otherwise, it's going to keep going and keep going and keep going. Okay, so to get rid of all that, I'm going to hit delete, delete on my Mac or backspace, backspace on my PC. And then I'm going to try that vertical line again. Click once at the top. Put your mouse at the bottom, hold shift for a vertical line, and click once at the bottom to connect the beginning and the end of that line. Now, once that line is done, you have to deactivate these points. And the easiest way to do that is go anywhere on the page. I hold my command key on my Mac. That would be your control key on a PC. And you click anywhere on the page click and now those points have been deactivated that line is done when i let go of the command key on my mac or the control key on my pc i'm right back where i wanted to be with the pen tool so if you have a line that is a perfect 45 degree angle you click once at the beginning reposition your mouse at the end and hold shift and click again. That will give you a perfect 45 degree angle. Again, on my Mac, I hold command and click. That will deselect the line. That would be control and click with your PC. And now when I let go of the command key or the control key, I've got my pen tool yet again. Now this says hold the shift key the whole time because we have 45 degree angles, verticals and horizontals. They're all made with the shift key. So I'm going to click once here. I'm going to hold my shift key and click there. Hold my shift key the whole time and click there for a vertical. Shift click for a horizontal. Shift click for a vertical. Shift click for a horizontal. Shift click for a vertical and shift click for a 45 degree angle. Once that line is done, I hold command on my Mac or control on my PC and I click to deselect the line. If the image is kind of low on my screen, I hold my space bar from my hand tool and we'll push this up. And now when you have angles that are not 45 degrees, you don't hold your shift key. You just kind of freehand draw this. So I'm going to click there, click, 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 click. Then when I have a perfect horizontal line, I hold shift at the end and click. Now I let go of the shift key to do an odd angle. There's another odd angle. There's another odd angle. I say odd because it's not 45 degrees. There's a perfect horizontal. So there at the end, I hold shift and click. And let's say you're drawing and you accidentally click there. Or you accidentally skip this one and you click there. Okay, keep going. You can correct those mistakes later. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep going and I'm gonna shift click to keep going. Now I look back and notice my mistakes. I have to correct them. So again, on a Mac, I would hold my command key. On a PC, I would hold my control key for that white arrow, which is your editing tool. I can take that point and reposition it back up there where it should have gone. But notice I jumped from there down to there. I forgot to make this point. So if you're on a line and you can see the anchor points, the line is active, you can hover over that line and you will see a plus. You can add a point where you forgot to put one. So I can click right there, add a point, 
hold my command key on my Mac or my control key on a PC and pull that point down, but you'll notice it made a bent line. So if that ever happens, I go back to my pen tool, come all the way down to the convert point tool, and I'm gonna convert a curve into a corner just by hovering over this anchor point and I click. There we go. You can correct. Things are very flexible when you are drawing with the pen tool. So if you make a mistake, keep going. You can correct them easily when you're done. Okay, when I'm done with this, I press and hold and come back to the pen tool. I can hold command on my Mac or control on my PC and click to deselect that line. Now I hold my space bar for the hand tool and I'll push this up. And it says for these two closed shapes at the bottom, you will see a small circle next to your pen tool when you go all the way around. That small circle is called the loop. That means you're about to go all the way around and close up the border. So just so you can see this, I'm not gonna start right there because then the loop is gonna show up right on that arrowhead. I'm gonna start down here just to make things a little more clear. Okay, when I click and let go, I'm gonna keep clicking and clicking. And let's say I make a couple mistakes. Notice I do not stop. I'm gonna keep going. Obviously you don't wanna make this many mistakes, but if you do, it's no big deal. Okay, and when you come back to the start, you're gonna see a small circle next to your pen tool. That is called the loop. So when you click, all your points get activated. This is now a completed shape. So I hold my command key on my Mac or control key on my PC. I click outside to deselect that shape. And now while I hold my command on my Mac or my control key on my PC, I have my white arrow, my editing tool. I can click and reposition these little mistakes. Like I said, it's very bendable and flexible like little wire frames. Easy fixes right there. Command click to deselect or control click with a PC. And then I'll do the last shape. Click, 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 click. Now I've got a vertical edge, so I'm gonna shift click at the bottom. Now I've got an odd angle, so I just click and I come back to the start, click. Notice how this is the only one that has anchor points. So I'm gonna hold my command key on my Mac or control key on a PC and click outside. So none of these points are activated. I'll just zoom out so you can see the whole page. Right there. I've traced over every one of these lines. Okay, when you do that, I'm not going to be able to see those lines. Okay, they're, they're not part of the artwork. So what you want to do is when you are done, you go to your paths panel and it says you are on a work path. Work path means Photoshop doesn't know you're done. Photoshop thinks you're going to keep working on it. So in order to indicate to Photoshop that indeed you are done, you double click the words work path and you call that straight paths. As soon as I click OK, what I would recommend is you click once down below, right down here, everything will temporarily disappear. Then you click once on the name to activate everything again. Okay, but again, when you turn this into me, I'm not gonna see these lines. So as visual proof that you trace these correctly, you're gonna set up your brush and you're gonna set up a brush tip. On my Mac, I'll hold Control and Option. We'll go a little bigger. On my PC, I would hold Control, Alt, and the right mouse button to make my brush a little bigger. And I'll go up. We'll make a soft brush right there. Okay, the hardness is about zero. Let's go there. So that's a decent sized brush, about 
50 pixels or so. Not too big. And what I want to do is pick any color. So instead of painting with black, I'll just paint with red right up here. And what I want Photoshop to do is make this brush travel down these lines like a train following train tracks. Okay, all you have to do is I'll pull my paths panel out. I've got my brush set up. I've got the size of the brush that I want to work with. I have the color that I want to work with. I clicked down below, then I clicked on the name to activate everything. And on the Paths panel pop-up menu, I say Stroke Path, Paint Along the Path. Photoshop is going to ask, which tool would you like to use to paint along the path? You do all of these, but I'm going to do my brush because that's what I set up. There is a button called Simulate Pressure. We'll keep that off on this first one. And when I click OK, there's my brush following these lines like a train going down the tracks. I click once down below to turn off the paths, and that's what your file should look like when you turn it into me. There's my visual proof that you have traced these lines correctly. So once I know, or once you know you've done it correctly, you'll go to File, Save a Copy, as always. This will be your last name, first name, straight paths. I want it on my desktop as a JPEG, and I'll save it always as a high-quality JPEG. And that's my beginning introduction to paths here in Adobe Photoshop. In the next tutorial, we're going to ditch all these straight lines and talk about curves. And that's where you really want to pay attention. So I'll see you in a few minutes.